Hey everybody, welcome to your November 2022 Psychic Tarot Reading with me, Stella Wilde. It's going to be a November to remember, so stay tuned. We're going to dive into each sign and see what's going on with the tarot for you. So welcome to the channel or welcome back. We're delighted that you are here with us. Uh, so before we get into our reading, please do consider hitting that thumbs up button and the subscribe button if you're not already uh, getting notifications <laughs> from us when we upload videos. And since we're in eclipse season, you may want to check out my previous video about the new moon in Scorpio solar eclipse. I'll leave a link to it in the description of the video. And also check out my Mars retrograde video uh, because Mars is going to be retrograde this month, December and half of January, and you're going to want to know how to use those energies. I will be filming a separate video on the full moon eclipse in Taurus, so that's another good reason to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so you don't miss that when it uploads. So for this reading, watch for your sun, your moon, your rising, and your Venus. Timestamps are in the description of the video and the first pinned comment. All right, let's get into your November to remember. All right, Aries, let's check in with your November to remember energies with my bold and bodacious deck. We have the King of Swords. The Justice. The Page of Cups in your heart. The Lovers. Lots of air in this reading. And the Ace of Wands. No reversals with this deck. Okay. Very interesting energies, Aries. So I'm going to break this down in a couple different ways. So just apply the energies to your life. Um, I like to, we can look at this week by week. We can also look at it oh, holistically. I'm going to do both. The energy in your heart is the page of cups. This is our Pisces energy. Jupiter has just backtracked into Pisces. When Jupiter is in Pisces, it is kind of like having a protective angel on your shoulder. Uh, Jupiter is a good luck planet. I feel like there is... A lucky break you may have in the month ahead. I feel it's likely to come the second half. It could be coming around um, even I think by the time we get into Sagittarius season with this with this going on here. So I'm going to say the 26th could be a very lucky day for you. Um, I'm not sure if that's Thanksgiving in the United States, but I think the Thanksgiving weekend, the long weekend, could be very, very productive and lucky for you. Like there's, and when I say lucky, I just whatever that means for you it doesn't mean you have to go to the casino. Okay, <laughs> it just means, you know, there's something that puts a song in your heart. There could be something a little surprising about some good fortune that comes your way. Whatever that means for you, there is a beautiful yes here from the universe. So something, something beautiful pops for you, especially that last week. Uh, and this is your energy. So you're feeling, I mean, your heart with this page of cups and then this ace of wands here, I mean, you're feeling like a, a sense of renewal in your life, which is very lovely. Uh, it could be about some sort of communications energy. It could be with an important relationship in your life. It could be with a sibling because Gemini rules your third house of siblings. So there's something could be, you know, a reconnection with a sibling. And we know there's often family reunions around in November, third week, um, especially with the Thanksgiving. So third, fourth week. So this is very, very nice. Uh, let's break this down further. So we have a lot of air here. We have Gemini, we have the Libra, we have the Gemini, well, we have Aquarius, Libra, and then we have Gemini over here. So air signs in particular could be at the forefront, but also because we have a lot of air going on with this energy, there's a lot going on in your mind. You're really mulling a lot of things over. Um, this could be that you're mulling over things to do with an important air sign in your life. But you could also be mulling over legal contracts since we have the justice card showing up here or some important decision that's going to require a lawyer meeting with a lawyer, getting paperwork done, that type of thing. This looks very favorable. It looks like you're going to meet somebody if you're looking for a lawyer, as an example, it looks like you're going to find somebody who's who's really going to know their stuff because the king of swords is coming up here. So you're not going to get some shyster. You're going to get somebody who who is very adept at their field. So there could be there could be contracts, legal matters, finding a lawyer, legal judgments, maybe coming to the forefront 
something like that going on. It's if there is something legal going on, and of course, this is not legal advice. I'm not an attorney. This is just reading energies and tarot cards. But it looks like, again, I feel like it's, you're going to find the right person here who's going to help you with this, this situation. And, you know, it it moves in a direction that you like. All right. That's what I will say about that. Uh, it gets it's something to get done quickly. It moves in a direction you like. The person knows what they're doing, etc. All right. Um, so we have maybe some big decision looming in the first week of November where you're really going to have to look at something objectively going on in your life. Um, it, you could have a little bit, I'm just going to say this because the Pisces energy is in your heart. You could have a little bit of a tug of war going on between your head and your heart a tiny bit, especially maybe romantically also, since the lover's card is showing up here, like there could be something here also where you're either going to have to make a decision to commit to something or a decision to take that sword and let it go. So, but whichever way you decide, it's going to be right for you. And that's the thing. Aces are about the self. So whatever is going on with this, you have to look at it objectively and not so tender heartedly, but look at it objectively in terms of what ultimately is going to be the best for you. And it could be a little bit of a, a hard decision to make. It's, it's very possible here. You could be torn. I mean, we have this, the double you know, the lovers here, two people, the scale. So you could be kind of torn in two directions, like I said, between your head and your heart and making a decision. And this decision doesn't have to be about a love relationship. It could be about some other important thing in your life. Like, you know, do I stay in the job? Do I leave the job? Do I stay where I'm living or do I move somewhere else? All of those types of big decisions. Libra energy, the second week. Interesting because that second week is also your uh, full moon lunar eclipse in your house of money. So there could be some big money contract or something legal matter wrapping up, coming to light. It may not necessarily wrap up. It could just be that you get the information you need to move forward on something. We will do a separate video on that full moon, of course, as I mentioned. Um, because this is your seventh house of relationships, again, this may have something to do with some other important person in your life. So there could be a legal proceeding like a divorce. It could be a marriage. Although this is not an optimal time to get married, in my opinion, astrologically speaking. Um, but this can also be, this could also be, again, who's ever working for you in a legal capacity. Um, this could be some sort of business partnership as well, starting, dissolving, that type of thing. All right. So, um, but as I said, all of this energy looks looks very favorable. And with the Page of Cups, you do have some, some spiritual protection with with Jupiter going retrograde in that Piscean house, in that 12th house of yours. Third week, we have the lover's card. So major, this is a big month for you because you have two major arcana showing up. This is where Mars is retrograding in your chart right now. Well, retrograding for everybody in Gemini, but this is your third house. So I feel like there is going to be an important conversation, communication in that third week uh, that is going to necessitate a choice which direction you're going to go in. It may be connected with this. It may not be connected with it. Um, so you're going to have to see how this applies to your life. Gemini individual really in the forefront for you. There could be somebody from your past that comes back. Now this again could be business, personal, love, family, etc. cetera. Um, this is, there is something here absolutely with some sort of destined karmic connection in your life and whether like i said that moves forward it doesn't move forward what is the nature of that particular thing uh that is to be determined because <laughs> it's up to you and it's a general reading um but with this ace of wands showing up here at the end there is a green light for you in all things gemini related writing speaking teaching networking sales you're going to probably know the direction you're going to want to move in with this particular area of person situation in your life. However, please be advised that Mars is retrograde. You may in fact tweak the plan or change your mind a little bit as, as the months roll on. And as we get out of the Mars retrograde after January 12th, 2023. Um, but I think the important thing is that you you're starting. You, you make the decision. You say, okay, yes, this is exactly what I want or what I don't want. And then 
how that plan unfolds, the nitty gritty details, those are those are going to get ironed out and those may, may change a little bit for you. But I feel like, especially in anything Gemini related, you could have a beautiful success and beautiful good news coming in by the end of the month as well. Again, writing, speaking, teaching, networking, sales. So there could be something really, really fabulous that pops at the end of November for you. So very interesting energies here, Aries. All right, Taurus, let's see what's going on for you this month, November to remember, especially with that big lunar eclipse in your sign. Stay tuned for that video that will be coming out shortly. We have a five of swords for you starting off the month. We have the high priestess. The three of pentacles is in your heart. You just want the answer. This fell out. Six of pentacles. And the world. Wow. Wow. So two major arcanas showing up. Could be an important month for you, of course, with that big eclipse in your sign. Okay, so I'm going to read this a couple different ways. Uh, your heart is interesting. Your heart is the three of pentacles, the energy in the middle here. So this is, I feel like you really want a plan to come together. You want the information. You want the solid direction, uh, to-do list, etc. So you know how you can make a situation happen for yourself. There is something likely to be wrapping up for you this month, coming to a very successful conclusion because the world card is here. But there, with the world, there is very much a sense of chapters ending, etc. Uh, we have the Scorpio energy. We have your energy. We have the number 21. I think even though this is our fourth week energy, we can still read it, you know, a couple different ways, these cards. The 21st is likely to be a very important wrap up as we get to the end of Scorpio season for you. Uh, with some something in your life where you have been seeking more balance. It could be financial since the pentacles are showing up, but I feel like you have perhaps been out of balance and out of whack with something in your life because you haven't had the plan to move forward. So I feel like by the 21st, you're going to have the information, the knowledge, the to-do list, the steps that you're going to know, oh, this is what I have to do. I need to do da 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 and that's going to give you that feeling of, okay, I can wrap this up and I can wrap it up successfully. Okay. Um, all right. So we have some, this is very interesting energy. So we come into November with a five of swords moment. <laughs> Let's hope it's just a moment. This could be on the 5th of November as we build toward that eclipse happening on the 8th. There could be some a lot of mental stress and anxiety. That's what this card is for me, a daytime anxiety energy. There could be some, I don't want to say nasty words, but there could be a little bit of an argument, verbal tension. Um, I feel like like the, the, the clouds are clearing though, but there may be like a little bit of a blowout. And I don't think it's going to be too bad, but but it is the full moon approaching and there's a lot of tense energy at that full moon. So if there is something you're irritated and anxious about, maybe be careful with your words here with this Five of Swords popping out, because you may indeed, depending on what's going on in your life, when it's happening, you may indeed um, have people leave your life based on whatever happens here with this verbal altercation. So I'm not saying you shouldn't speak your truth or you shouldn't uh, defend yourself verbally if you need to. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that if there is something that you blurt out because you're feeling anxious, just be careful with that. Just be very careful with that because it, it could cause people to leave your life. Maybe not forever, but there could be some alienation that that's involved with this energy. Because I feel like this is you. This is your energy showing up. Like you're going to be in charge. You're in charge of, of your mind and your mouth. <laughs> okay, so so just be just be careful. It's all I'm saying, especially because we have that lunar eclipse in your sign and you're going to be in the spotlight with that energy. All right. And eclipses often bring endings. So I'm just saying. All right. We have the second week when we're going into the eclipse. We have the high priestess. Oof. Okay, so. Full moons bring things to light. Again, I'm going to do a separate video on that, but there is likely something that comes out of the woodwork, comes to light, that confirms an intuitive hit you had, confirms your intuition that you are absolutely correct. You know, it's so fascinating, even though 
you know, we've had experiences in our lives where, you know, yes, our intuition has been confirmed, etc. It's it's we always have that little bit of surprise like, oh, wow, this <laughs> I really was right about that. My psychic hit really was accurate about that particular situation. And you're going to see it's going to be so full blown right in your face with that full moon, like, oh, my gosh, like you were so right. And you were right to wait with something. And I think either you were right to wait with something or you're going to see how the universe was right to make you wait a little bit in something, like I said, that you've been wanting to have the plan come together. All right. So I feel like this is very positive energy with this high priestess here. However, I would also say, because this can be a card of secrets, a secret may be revealed. It could be you reveal a secret in your heart that has been bothering you. It could be somebody else reveals something to you. And that's another possibility here. And especially with this five of swords that shows up next to it, I feel like if there's something that hasn't been said, especially in a close relationship, um, and it's been kind of something that's been brooding and building and bothering you. It's likely to to really, really come out at that full moon. And um, you may be you may be very surprised by the reaction. Could go either way so with the surprise, but it's gonna that's gonna be interesting. So um, don't be too quick to blurt things out. I just am feeling this is so important for me to say to you. Also with that high priestess, that can be about just kind of holding back a little bit and not revealing all. Because um, again, I just feel like there's a sense you, you really could alienate somebody that you may later down the road be like, why did I do that? And, and I didn't want to really do that. But it's the sense of frustration that's been building. All right, so that's a possibility. All right, now. Wanting a plan to come together in your heart. This could also have something to do with your workplace. You're really wanting something to be settled with your work. Uh, third week of November, we have the Six of Coins, which is a nice energy. This can be being on the receiving end, finally, of some goodies, bonus, good news, help, whether it's financial help, help in some other way in your life. Uh, your life, trying to get your life back in balance, especially in a practical way. Again, I feel like whatever's going to be coming to light, you're going to be at that full moon. You're going to be rebalancing your life as a result of whatever this has been going on. Um, so, but it's a six of coins. It's not a ten of coins. It's still in process of getting rebalanced in some way, whether it's your energy, whether it's your finances, whether it's just, you know, something else going on in your life. Okay. But this is a good, I like the six of coins. I think it's a, it can be a very, very good energy. Um, <clears throat> but look at where, um, where you may have things going on about being deserving of receiving help in some way. And I, and I mean also help from the universe, not just help from, you know, an actual person, but the universe delivering the resources, the connections, whatever you need to get your life back in balance. Make sure that you have that open hand. Work on your receptivity. That is a part of manifestation also. So that may be, you know, something to look at the third week. And then, as I said, fourth week, we have a very beautiful wrap up where you're going to see this is a November to remember. There is a chapter that is coming to a close successfully so that you can move on in your future and you're going to be moving on to greater balance and stability in your life. Um, but there is, and you're going to have the plan on how to do it also, but there is something that is likely to come out of the woodwork that may leave you temp a little temporarily discombobulated. But know that it is temporary. The universe is delivering the plan, the steps, the resources that you're going to need to move forward successfully. All right, Gemini, November to remember. Let's see what we need to know for you with these energies this month. Oh, my goodness. Oh, we have your energy coming right out. The lovers. All right, let's see. I just like saying it that way. Ah, the strength card. Wow, two major arcanas right away. Going to be a very significant month for you. In your heart is the Six of Cups. Interesting. The star. Look at these major arcanas coming out, Gemini. Wow. 
and the emperor can you believe this can you believe all of these major arcanas amazing this is going to be a huge month for you wow okay so i'm going to break this down a couple different ways um but this is this is such a significant month for you we have your energy to start it off we have leo energy here with with the strength card we have aquarius energy and we have aries energy Ooh, wow so those those signs could be particularly important to you in the month ahead also we have father energy showing up here with the emperor and or boss energy as well okay gemini six of cups in your heart so ye, there is something here I, I i like to call this like the return to innocence card I think there's going to be just so much popping for you. I mean, this is a major karmic month with all these major arcanas. And you may be kind of feeling like, can I just be a kid again? <laughs> can I just not adult so much this month? Now, it's all good adulting from these energies. But can I just, like, go do something fun for myself, like lighthearted and free? And I think you'll have a chance to do that in the month ahead. But there may be something where you're going to be looking at, I don't want to say escapism, but you're going to be looking for an out <laughs> to try to try to find some innocent, carefree time for yourself in the month ahead. Um, Six of Cups is interesting, too, because it can be about siblings and it could also be about a very important friendship that's you know close to you. Uh, it could also be a, some sort of soulmate connection or yearning for a soulmate. That's possible also. But I'm just feeling like a return to innocence. Can I return to simpler times, times when I didn't have so much major stuff going on? Because, I mean, you do. You have all these major arcanas. They're good. They're good, though. But even so, you know, we forget that sometimes even good things can cause stress. <laughs> it can be good stress, but it still can be stressful. So we have the lovers here, which is your energy showing up the first week. So there is a lot of personal self-interest going on in the first week, which is fine. I mean, there's there may be an important choice you need to make between your needs and somebody else's needs, uh, balancing those. Uh, there may be very a very important uh, project that you're involved with in the first week. Since we have the sixth and we have the eighth, the eight here, which we have the full moon lunar eclipse on the 8th, the period between the 6th and the 8th could find you really digging deep, could also be with another Gemini in your life, digging deep to have patience and fortitude with the situation, um, it could, especially perhaps with a parent or boss, and just having patience with that situation and not just wanting to, you know, run away, want, run away from it, but actually deal with it. Um, you have that patience and fortitude with the strength card showing up here. Uh, you could have a very beautiful success coming to you between the 6th and the 8th. Um, very, very possible. I believe that's a weekend. It's close to the weekend. The 8th is the Tuesday. So the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Um, there could be there could be some very good news that heads your way. Um, but what I'm really feeling is that in your heart, you know a choice is also coming up. A choice is going to need to be made. This has been coming up for Gemini quite a bit in the last several readings. Definitely check the new moon solar eclipse reading I did for you. because It came up big time in that reading. Um, so really tuning in with your heart and which direction you want to take, which path you want to take, uh, is going to be in focus the first two weeks because there could be some good news that comes in that you're going to have to respond to. Um, and... And again, it's going to require an up-leveled version of you, which of course is fine. It, there's a lot of personal growth I feel going on this month for you with these energies coming out. And of course, you're more than capable of handling this. But your first reaction may be the Six of Cups, like, I'm not ready for that. Because that's, like I said, a very childlike energy. When you are showing up as your mature Gemini Lovers card, Major Arcana energy here, which, yeah, I can handle this. I can, I can do this. But you may have to kind of talk yourself into that a little bit um, if you get my drift. But this is very, very positive. Um, you should be feeling good with this strength card. There's an opportunity here to uh, to strengthen your physical body. 
in the first two weeks, especially pay attention. Just there's nothing bad here, but just really take care of yourself. Um, also, because the full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your 12th house of things hidden behind the scenes, and this is a very spiritual card, you could get a very important spiritual message uh, that can help you figure out which direction to go in. So this could come through a dream, some sort of psychic experience, uh, you know, ep epiphany, message from an ancestor. I mean, psychic message from somebody else. I mean, whatever it might be. Um, so that may also be going on here. Um, so is your heart really into something? How strong is your heart in terms of making this decision, this path that, that is going to be offered to you? This is the thing. All right, we already talked about that. Then we have the Aquarius energy and we have the Emperor. So we have your ninth house of the big picture perspective of your life. And we have hopes and wishes and dreams. So again, this has been coming up quite a bit. Where's the best direction going forward for you? There could be, a, again, I'm feeling like you're going to have a sense that a new pathway is getting ready to open up for you. It may not be in full swing until Aquarius season because Mars is currently retrograde in your sign and doesn't go direct until January 12th, et cetera, et cetera. Watch my Mars retrograde video. All right. But there is something here. I look at this as kind of like a North Star of Destiny there. You may, in fact, see third week. Yes, there is something that's getting ready to open up for me. It's going to be a beautiful healing path. It's going to affect the greater pic picture perspective of my life. It's something where I can really take charge of my destiny, hopes, wishes, and dreams. I could really gain something amazing uh, by following this new path. But it may not be the time to start the new path yet. It may just be a time to accept that the new path has to happen and accept that, uh, you know, there's going to be a whole new direction. There's going to be healing in your life by choosing this new direction, etc. This could also be some sort of important gain from a father or a boss in your life as well, the second half. So this, there could be a, a beautiful, I don't want to say closure necessarily, but a beautiful healing, a beautiful offer, a beautiful destiny, something that's offered, something that's unfolding between you and either, I said, like I said, a boss, authority figure, or an Aries in your life. Um, so this is very positive, beautiful energy. You will be able to take charge, to have this feeling of really taking charge of this, this decision, this choice, whatever's going on for you uh, by the end of the month. And if you have particularly an elderly father that you're dealing with, uh, his well-being, his health may also be in the forefront Finding a doctor for him, finding the right path for him and healing him in some way may also be on the agenda with these two energies. This is a very positive, positive card here. You could be healing your relationship with, with a father in your life as well. If that applies to you, again, apply the energies to your life. So very interesting stuff here. This is a big month for you, Gemini. Really, really big. Um, just know that you've got this. This is the thing that I'm really, really feeling here. You've got this. Take time. Be patient with yourself also. All right. But really look at how you can be an adult about something and not resort to old childhood habits of running away and escapism. All right, Cancer, let's see what's going on for you in the November to remember. Cancers, what do they need to know? Eight of Swords, Ten of Coins, Queen of Swords, Ace of Cups, and your energy, the King of Cups. Okay, wow. Very interesting energies going on here. There is, it is decision time. <laughs> I have a feeling that you've made up your mind or, well, let me reframe. 
you, yeah, well, let me say it that way. <laughs> You've made up your mind, uh, so or so you think about a particular situation, whatever the case may be, uh, whatever that, that is. It could be something personal in your life, a personal relationship. It could be about a family, finances, about moving, real estate, that type of thing. So with the Queen of Swords in your heart, you're like, okay, I, I have made up my mind. This is how it's going to go down. However, I think you're going to have a change of heart about something. Your heart is going to end up overruling what you've decided. That's what I feel. <laughs> okay, so we look at all these energies holistically and then we break it down uh, week by week. Um, but you do, you feel like, okay, this time I'm going to use my head to make this decision rather than my heart. And then, yeah, go back to this anyway. <laughs> you go back to, to a heart-based, to your heart-based intuitive energy, which is, which is fine. It's absolutely fine. So we start the month out for you with this Eight of Swords. So there is something here that, that you are trying to make a decision about. You could be wrestling with mentally. There is a feeling of being stuck mentally. Uh, you could feel like you're stuck with your finances. That's possible since we have the Ten of Coins next to it. Um, we have the, um, full moon lunar eclipse happening on the eighth in Taurus. That is your house of hopes and wishes and dreams. So you could be feeling like, you know, when is my wish ever going to come true? Is something ever going to happen? Am I going to get unstuck? Uh, especially with finances, since we're talking about Taurus or my safety and security needs, is this ever going to happen? You may not be seeing a solution, etc. I do feel at that eclipse, since eclipses can bring release and more information, that by the 10th, you have, which is our second week here, you have the uh, information about how you can achieve this financial goal. There could be important news about your finances, but since we're talking about the house of gains, which is your 11th house also, hopes, wishes, dreams, um, you know, there there could be a, a very interesting money breakthrough. It's very possible for you in the second week. Of course, it's a general reading. Um, but if you have been just hanging in limbo, waiting to make a decision also about some sort of financial situation, you are likely to be making that decision. It probably involves another person or it could be family money as well. Family inheritances, legacy money, family property you could be dealing with also. Uh, there may be something that might require a lawyer because of the Queen of Swords showing up in the heart. Um, there could be, too, that you want to really protect these particular assets or whatever's going on the property with this Ten of Pentacles. There could be a prenup. That's possible. Or you're contemplating that before you get married. Also very possible. Um, but I'm feeling like there's something here again that may look good on paper in terms of how you're going to proceed with something involving this ten of pentacles but your heart's going to have a different say in the matter and there could be new information that comes in at that sagittarius new moon around the 22nd ish 21st 22nd 23rd that changes your perspective emotionally on how you proceed with this. So Sagittarius is your sixth house of work and well-being. So there could be some sort of new possibility, new offer coming in for you with your work. But also because we're talking about the house of well-being, it could just be something still not sitting right with you emotionally about this over here. And that's why you may make a different decision or a change with it. Okay, so that's possible with this. Or these could just be two separate energies that you're dealing with. It's possible. In any case, the third week shows us some beautiful emotional opportunity that sits right with you because your energy is coming up here, King of Cups. It could be coming from a Cancer Scorpio Pisces. It could be coming from a significant um, male water energy in your life. That's also possible. But I feel like this is definitely probably happening in Scorpio season or by the end of Scorpio season, which ends the 21st, I believe. So again, just kind of be flexible with the energies here. Um, but I feel since aces are about the self, this is really about something that is very personal to you and about you taking charge of 
starting that thing, starting that offer, saying yes to that offer, or changing the terms of the offer to suit you better, that type of thing. Again, I feel like you're trying to be sensible by operating from this objective standpoint, and there's nothing wrong with that. Because maybe you were feeling the thing was held up because you know, your mind was fixated maybe on a certain outcome that you wanted and you were trying to be more practical, right? <laughs> but really, one of the best ways that you make your decisions in gen, again, in general, is that you go with your gut. You allow yourself the time and space to flow with energy and feel into decisions. So that's why I'm saying with this heavy water energy the last two weeks, like, and this in your heart, you may be like, wait a minute, I didn't make the decision in the way that suits my energy. And that's why I've got to uh, redo, so to speak, whatever this was over here to make it suit me better. So there's room for negotiation though also, like if there's some sort of deal that's been, is trying to get wrapped up, especially at that full moon uh, on the eighth, you know, you may be like, well, wait a minute, hold up. I need some time to think about it. And then you come back with a counter offer or you realize that's not something you want to do. Your intuition sits with it and you're like, no, I don't want to do that. So what I love about this is whatever's going on this month, you land on your feet and you land on your feet in a way that emotionally feels right to you, which is wonderful. And I do think there could be a beautiful, emotional, fresh start, particularly with finances and family finances because of this 10 of coins here. Um, so this is very, very, very positive for you. And if you're looking for love, <laughs> uh, there may indeed be some sort of new water sign who connects with you. So, but don't start any new relationship until after Mars gets out of retrograde on January 12th. All right, Leos, let's see what's going on for you in the November to remember. What do you need to know, Leo, for your month ahead? We have the Judgment card. Bold and bodacious deck. I haven't used this in a while. I love this deck. All right. The Justice. Wow. Two major arcanas. See, I told you it's going to be a November to remember. Hermit. Oh, my gosh. Look at this major arcana energy. Oh my God, Taurus, the Hierophant. Look at this, Leo. Oh, look, and it just flipped over the world card. Oh my goodness, five major arcanas. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I do break this out week by week, but I also like to look at it holistically. We have the lunar eclipse showing up here with the tour, double Taurus energy going on. Um, whew, I am going to do a separate video on that, as I said in the intro. And if we just look at this holistically, there is a very important decision you are weighing in your life about a major commitment. Do you stay? Do you go? Now, this commitment could be work, love, where you're living, how you're living, who you're living with, whatever it may be. All right, major commitment. This is very karmic. You could be dealing with a Libra. You could be dealing with a Virgo. You could be dealing with a Taurus. You could be dealing with a Scorpio, an Aquarian, or another Leo. Oh my goodness. Okay. So we have the 20th and the 21st could be important days for you. The 9th, 11th, and the 5th. And we know that the full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your house of career. So again, we're going to do a separate video on that. So it could have something to do with that. But what, what I would say about this energy is that this requires, in my opinion, you to look at making this decision from a spiritual perspective, your, what your spirit needs, because the hermit is in the heart of the situation. So Yes, finances are important. Sure. I mean, we all need money to live, of course. So I'm not saying that that's not important. But the primary consideration in making this decision is 
what is the right path for me spiritually? What do I feel good about choosing? What is rightfully aligned with my energy? And of course, when we are rightfully aligned with the proper energy, that's how finances and prosperity come to us. So there is something here about spending some time in quiet contemplation to figure this out. There is some sort of big announcement that's coming. It may even come on the 2nd of November with the two that's showing up. Yes, I know it's a 20, but so there could be important news that comes in around the 2nd that is going to require a decision and a response. You are weighing all the evidence here with the Libra energy. This is your third house of communications. So there is going to be a decision that is going to be communicated, is going to be announced, is going to be pronounced, is going to, it's not just like, oh, let's just sit down and hash things over. This may have legal ramifications. It may involve a contract. Um, it, it, you know, this could be making the decision to get married, to get divorced. Uh, again, if you're retiring, that has legal implications for your finances. You could be saying yes to a new job opportunity that is going to have a contract and legal impl implications for taxes and, you know, all those things. So you get my point here. So there's there's a lot of evidence to be weighed. There is likely to be more evidence that comes to light at that full moon lunar eclipse as well. So whatever this is, though, it is about bringing a new life, breathing new life into your existence. But again, this is a very karmic spiritual card as well. So we got two very strong cards of spirit going on here with the hermit and the judgment. We can look at this scale. If we look at um, whether or not you can get into heaven or the afterlife from in the ancient Egypt Egyptian perspective, where they put the feather on the scale. And was your heart lighter than a feather? And if it was, then you would go to the afterlife into the good place. OK, so again, this is about is does my heart feel light? Is my conscience clear? It, you know, am I doing right by myself? Am I doing the right thing for myself also in making this decision? Am I weighing and balancing my needs, other people's needs, etc.? All right. So all of these things. This is the predominant energy the first two weeks. And notice the hermit is focused in on this with his little light. You're shining a light on what am I going to do with this? And that full moon is going to shine a light and bring in more information. Okay, so again, because that with this Libra, that's your third house of communication. So more information will come in about this situation. Now, we go the third week with the Hierophant. And this is a lot about, yes, that's your house of career. So like I said, but it's also your status, your house of status in the world. So it can be about a marriage and or divorce, some other type of partnership, business. It can be about teaching and learning. But let's look at it just in general as a very karmic card about whether or not you have graduated to the next level karmically. Did you learn an important lesson? So again, this lesson can be, am I really making the best decision spiritually for myself? first and foremost, rather than focusing in on simply the material reality of something. I'm not saying you should, like I said, I'm not saying you should ignore the material, but that maybe is going to be secondary. The first thing is spiritually and karmically. What type of karma do you want to create for yourself? What type of karma <laughs> Will you heal by moving on and wrapping up some sort of situation, learning this lesson? So these two cards here next to each other, this this is about endings, but also new beginnings that come out of successful endings. So you could have a very positive karmic wrap up to a situation in November where you feel like successfully you have graduated the PhD program in whatever, whatever karmic lesson you had to learn with this. And I feel a lot of it is about balance and fairness. Whatever we're talking about here. OK, because Leo, you're a very generous sign. Like you, you are a lot about giving of yourself, giving from the heart and and 
just sharing so much with other people and you know maybe you haven't been giving enough to yourself or maybe you've been surrounded by people who've taken advantage of you i don't know um but you know whatever lesson you have learned <laughs> um you will feel like wow i absolutely got it and i am ready for my next chapter so i love this for you there is something here too with the world cards and she's naked here about allowing yourself to be emotionally vulnerable now not to other people but i think more to yourself to really get real with yourself emotionally raw and real you know down to the basics here <laughs> like really looking at yourself like honestly without you know anything to stand in between you and yourself and just really looking at yourself and being like okay emotionally you know this is what i need to wrap this up and move on with my situation so i love this for you and i think by the time we get into aquarius season you really are going to be committing yourself to a whole new exciting reality with this with this situation so something new is getting ready to pop and be born in your world some new commitment you're going to be getting ready for but uh, this karmic situation needs to wrap up first you need to wrap it up it's it's something you have to decide and figure out and then out of successfully completing this the new will be born and you're going to see that very clearly in this november to remember all right, Virgo, let's see what's going on for you in your November to remember. Virgos, what do we need to know for the Virgos? We have the Five of Wands, the Chariot, your energy, the Hermit, and the heart of the situation. The Fool, gorgeous. Look at these major arcanas coming out, Virgo. Big November to remember. Are you kidding me? Another major arcana, Temperance. Wow. Okay. So all the struggles will bear fruit. Everything that you have been struggling for, fighting for, dealing with, you know, whatever it is, it will come to fruition this month with this beautiful energy here. Look, oh my gosh, look at this. Okay, so we read the energy holistically, but we also break it down week by week. Interesting that your hermit energy is showing up in the heart of the situation. So this is a month where it is vitally important for you to focus in on yourself and your self-interests. And sometimes that can be a little foreign to Virgo because you're, you are the sign of service. You're a lot about helping other people. But this is a month where you need to help yourself. <laughs> you need to, to, in my opinion, tune into the energies of fresh starts, new beginnings, moving forward, making decisions that are aligned for you um, and that move you out of a confusing and problematic situation, which I feel you will be moving out of it. And we have beautiful Sagittarius energy here to support you. And the Fool card also. So it's okay to focus on your self-interests. It's okay to take care of yourself. All right, so that's the, a very strong message. Taking care of yourself, putting, your, putting yourself in the driver's seat of your life, first and foremost this month, is gonna bring the positive change that you want. All right, now, we have the five of wands. We start off the month with that. This is a very interesting energy. It can be about spinning your wheels, I like to call the five of wands. It can be about things that are discombobulated. It can be you're trying to manage a lot of different situations and people, but everybody's all over the place. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. It can just be very confusing. And energy can feel scattered. So it could be you just have a lot of different irons in the fire with this five of wands, but it may not even be what you want to do anyway. Only you can decide that it's a general reading. Um, I feel like the fifth is going to be important. Something could come to a head where you're going to be like, what am I doing? <laughs> you're going to be like, what am I doing? Sorry, that was my elbow rubbing. That was my elbow. You know, you'd be like, what am I doing with this? As a result, by the seventh, by the time we get to that full moon, separate video coming on that, lunar eclipse in Taurus, your ninth house of the big picture perspective of your life, 
you're going to be like, I'm going to take charge of this. Why am I letting this run and rule my life? It's not making, making me happy. I'm not making forward progress. I'm just spinning my wheels, dealing with everybody else's shenanigans. And what am I doing? So by that full moon, I think you're taking charge. I love this chariot for you. You're taking charge. You're saying, no, I want to go in this direction or that direction. I am not going to continue to have my energy be frittered away. I'm going to choose my path. So, and with your energy looking at this, you're going to instinctually and intuitively know the direction you need to move in. This is not a time for you to be sitting there mulling it over, mulling it over, mulling it over. Feel into it with your intuition and feel the, the energy that the, the, blah, 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 the direction that gives you the most energetic inspiration. All right. It can be, I mean, it's interesting though. One's black and one's white here with these things. It can be very black and white. Actually, it can be either. I'm going to continue with this discordant shenanigan energy, or I'm going to move forward on the very clear one path. And you're going to know exactly what that is because it's not going to feel like this. It's going to feel like, woohoo, I'm ready. Like, let's get this show on the road. Let's move fast. And this is a card of fast moving energy. It feels aligned. It feels in flow. It's like everything is go, 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 go. Everything is smooth. The road just opens up for you. That is the direction to go in. You don't need to overthink it or overanalyze it. So this is, this is going to reach some sort of peak the first week. And the first week, just a lot of running around. But is it running around you really want to do? Probably not. Second week with that full moon lunar eclipse, you're going to be like, okay, I'm out of here. I know where I want to head, what I want to do. This is what's happening. You're in your heart. You're, you're absolutely aligned with it. And then look, we have a beautiful new beginning, the third week in November for you. You're feeling much lighter, much freer. There may be some important travel for some of you on the cards, especially the third week. It may even be the second second and third week with the chariot. Uh, that's possible. A chariot is a card of travel. But what I love about this is you're letting go of a lot of baggage. You're traveling lighter and freer than you have in a long time. And with this beautiful uh, angel of temperance here, you're feeling more balanced. You have more positive energy um, that's that's really, that is at your disposal for yourself rather than giving it away to other people. I think there could be a very positive new beginning um, in your home life because Sagittarius rules your fourth house. There is a new moon in Sagittarius on the 22nd, 23rd. So you could just have this breath of fresh air. Fourth house is not just home and family. It's also the foundation of your life. So you could finally feel like you're on solid ground again. You're having this sense of this is where I want to grow from. This is the new place I want to grow from, whether we're talking literally or figuratively speaking. Positive energy of transformation here. Absolutely beautiful with the temperance. Um, so you're going to find you're going to have a lot more energy at your disposal, a lot of beautiful healing energy to bring your life back in balance, a sense of adventure and freedom and just there's a also, I think, a very important spiritual message coming to you that fourth week as well that is going to, again, affirm that the direction you're going in is exactly correct for you. All right. So this is this is beautiful energy. Sagittarius people and, and, and Sagittarius season. So once we get into Sagittarius season this month, going to be very important for you. Sagittarius people important. Cancer people also important for you in the month ahead and possibly another Virgo with this energy showing up. But this is fantastic, Virgo. All right, Libras, let's see what's going on for you in your November to remember. What does the tarot have to say for Libras? Oh, we have the wheel. Wheel of Fortune. The big wheel is going retrograde right now. Jupiter is going retrograde in Pisces. We have the nine of coins. The fool. Oh, that flipped right over. Nine of wands. And.
and the eight of swords. Okay. So the ninth of the month, ninth, tenth, eighth, ninth, and tenth of the month could be very important for you with these numbers that are showing up here. So we like to read this holistically, and then we also break it down week by week. Interesting, you have the fool in your heart. There's going to be an opportunity for you to uh, probably have some sort of new beginning, especially in terms of creating your own prosperity in some way. Um, however, you know me, I'm a very honest reader, I will tell you. And I always try to read thing with things with the glass half full and half empty. However, I think you're maybe a little idealistic about what's involved with this, with this opportunity. All right. It can absolutely happen for you. But what I feel is it's going to maybe surprise you a little bit about how much hard work may be involved with it. Not that you can't work hard. Of course you can. And listen to what I'm saying. You may not have a totally clear, realistic perspective on what this is going to involve. And it's going to, Nine of Wands is here and the Eight of Swords. You're going to be stuck in for either eight to nine weeks or months of very hard work to make this opportunity fully happen for yourself. It will be worth it with the Nine of Coins here. It absolutely will be. But I'm just letting you know, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a lot, but we know that it, sometimes it's really the things we work the hardest for that are the most valuable that we care about the most also. So, you know, that's what I'm feeling kind of holistically from these energies. All right. So let's break it down week by week. The first week we have, um, the Jupiter energy, we have the wheel. So circumstances, energies are starting to shift, um, especially by the 10th. By the time we have that full moon eclipse, check out my separate video on that coming soon. Uh, in your eighth house of personal transformation, other people's resources, etc. The energy is going to is coming to a head is your your feet. It's, it's like I feel like it's almost like you're, you're getting ready to get off the roller coaster. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's coming. It's happening. There's a release. Uh, situations are now starting to turn and turn better and turn in your favor. And yes, there may be some sort of opportunity that comes. Jupiter is retrograding into Pisces. This is your sixth house of work and well-being. So it could be that some sort of opportunity from the past shows up for you in this area. There's a do-over. There's a chance to uh, fix something in this area of your life. Second week, we have the nine of coins. You have this Virgo energy. Um, and again, even with the Virgo energy, that's about a lot about working hard as well. Uh, so it is possible that whatever you may begin this month, and there may be something that you start with this opportunity. Uh, it may take nine months for it to come to full fruition. It may be until next September. You know, by the time it comes to the, the full wheel turning and fruition of it. But I do feel it will be worth it. Um, there could be some good news surrounding finances in the second week. There could be something where you have an opportunity to showcase your talents and abilities. Uh, there could be money that is spent to good advantage in your home in some way with the Nine of Pentacles. Um, I call this my personal paradise card. So again, these two combining here, there could be an opportunity for you to showcase your talents, to create a new business, to start a new business, to go back to an old employer, show them, you know, what you got, work hard, et cetera, invest your time and energy in something important to you, because this is very much about what you can do as an individual with your personal talents. That's very favorable. That could bring good fortune for you. Could be yes that week, but also could be in the long run as well with the wheel showing up. In your heart, you have the Fool card, which is beautiful. So your heart is light and free. You want that new beginning. You're ready for that new beginning in your heart, especially concerning this, whatever this is over here. Getting your finances in tip top shape, you know, you, and getting your work situation sh sorted out and getting yourself feeling more grounded and stable with your well being. That's another thing with this. Um, Okay, so all of that is good. Your heart's like excited and ready. 
But then we get the reality over here, which is the Nine of Wands and the Eight of Swords. So Nine of Wands can be a lot about exhaustion, hard work, hanging in there, doing what you need to do. Please, you know, this is not health advice, but since, you know, we are talking about your sixth house over here with Jupiter in Pisces, make sure that um, you're not resorting, going back to old bad uh, health habits, wellness habits here, where you're eating too much sugar or engaging in substances that are no good for you, etc. cetera. Um, because you are maybe feeling a little just tired and run down with this nine of wands here. Um, but Jupiter can be a very protective influence all right, with where, wherever it's traveling. So if you just, uh, you know, take care of things before they get out of hand, you know, <laughs> like check your, check yourself before you wreck yourself type energy. You'll be, you'll be okay, I feel. But this is about, the Zeta Swords can be like, you know, feeling stuck mentally. So again, I feel like because she's blindfolded, you may not want to see how much hard work <laughs> working your fingers to the bone, so to speak, this may take for you and from you if you want this particular thing. And in fact, the last two weeks of the month, you may see yourself just really stuck with a lot of work. Hey, I just read the energies here. Don't get mad at me. Okay, You may, you may be dealing with a lot or you may be kind of stuck with um, some sort of recurrent health situation and finding a solution to it but finding the solution again you cannot just be like oh ignore it no it's not me i don't have to take personal responsibility you do have to take personal responsibility you got a nine of coins coming out here this is the ultimate personal responsibility she does it herself she gets it done so if you want this fresh start it's really about you committing to what you need to do and if you do that libra you can have a lot of beautiful success with whatever this opportunity is here with this wheel, whether we're talking about business, personal, your well-being. All right. But I also do think that there is something that will lift your spirits and bring some good financial news. But then again, it's going to be like back to reality, back to getting it done, what you got to get done on the daily. So, but I do feel, I feel very, very strongly that your hard work will be rewarded, but we're also looking at a longer term influence because of the 10 of the 10 here, here with this wheel, major arcana coming up. This is not just about this month. This is also about the next nine, 10 months of your life with these energies that percolate now and how they end up continuing and how they end up resolving in that time period, nine to 10 months from now. All right, Scorpio, let's see what's going on for you in the November to remember. And happy birthday to all Scorpios. We have a Ten of Cups. That's a good start. Let's see what else we have. The Lovers. The Two of Cups. What's going on here, Scorpio? The moon, wow, this is very interesting. And the two of wands, I was like nervous. The <laughs> last one I was pulling out. All right, so I read the energies holistically and then we break it down week by week. interesting that we have the moon card showing up so this can be our full moon in taurus that's happening in your seventh house of personal relationships it's so interesting we have a two of cups lovers ten of cups very much focused in on personal relationships full moon lunar eclipse in taurus seventh house of relationships now that doesn't necessarily have to mean somebody's leaving your life it could also mean that the light is shining to let somebody in. It's very possible. And it has the element of surprise with this full moon lunar eclipse because it is conjunct Uranus. And with Uranus, it could go either way. So depending on your personal situation, and I'm gonna do a whole separate video on the lunar eclipse and pulling cards, but it's interesting that the moon came out because this can be unexpectedly 
it is revealed somebody close to you who has significant feelings for you. That is very possible. But then you like, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> Two of wands, like, I don't know. It's like in your hand now, what do I do? It's inconclusive, right? You're still trying to figure it out the last week of the month. So that that's possible. Or you're trying to figure it out after that lunar eclipse. Uh, so that is possible. There is the, another way to look at this energy is that a relationship that had been maybe just one of friendship turns into one now that is of lovers. A physical connection comes out of a friendship. That is possible. Um, there could be, because we have the Gemini coming up here, and that can be, is your eighth house of personal transformation. Your eighth house is also the house of intimacy. And because Mars is retrograde in your eighth house, there could also be an old lover who comes back. But this is of a cyclical nature. They come back, like they go in, they go out, they come back. They go out, they come back. Now, there's nothing negative here necessarily with this. There's good feelings and goodwill, but is there really a solid commitment? There's joy and happiness whenever you're together and it's very much a soul contract and there's good feelings, but... But there's also maybe a shadow side. Maybe they don't reveal themselves fully to you. Maybe, again, it's about cycles. Maybe they, um, you know, are not fully available. So when they are available, they're there and everything's happy and joyful, but then they go back to the other partner or they go back somewhere else or whatever, and then you're in the dark again. So it could have something like that going on also that maybe gets revealed or that gets highlighted for you because of the Mars retrograde and somebody coming back around. Whether or not you accept that particular offer is, is up to you with this going on here. It's it's inconclusive. I don't, I don't know what you're gonna do. It's a general reading. You'll figure it out for your life. I mean, that's very possible. Um, so let's now break it down though, week by week. This, these are just the general possibilities with, with this energy. Overall, I think this month looks very good for you if we, if we break it down week by week. And the third week, we do have a new moon in Sagittarius, which is your second house. Here it's showing up here, the two of wands, which is the fire, your second house of money. So there could be something going on here also with some sort of new passion project or other people's money, money or funding from another source because other people's money coming to light here with this, this going on over here. And we have this partnership goodwill card. So it could also be uh, support from the family or a very close friend coming in to help you as well with some sort of financing business situation, maybe funding for a home that some or home renovations. It could be something like that also um that gets started i don't think it completes but at this month because we have the two of wands and twos are about waiting but the ball gets rolling or a decision comes to light and gets made that new moon in sagittarius actually has some favorable energy associated with it i will do a separate video on that as well so there could be something coming to light with some support coming out of the woodwork for you in your in a financial sense um there could all there could be you know, like I said, some sort of partnership, but there also could be possibly a change in employment. There could be a uh, passion project offered to you. There could, you know, anything like that. There could be just something that is a door opening for you, but also it's gonna positively affect your finances. All right, by the end of the month, you'll see that, but I feel like it's continuing to evolve in Sagittarius season into December with the Two of Wands showing up. Now, First week, Ten of Cups. All should be good in your world with this Ten of Cups here. You should be feeling good. There may be an important relationship, whether business or personal. It doesn't have to be lovers. It can just be a good friend. Like you're, you're just feeling good. You know, rainbow of happiness. Things should be okay in your world. It's important for you to schedule something where you can enjoy yourself as well with a significant person in your life. Like have lunch with a good friend or, you know, whatever. Whatever you like to do. Do something fun with another person. Uh, we have the Gemini energy showing up in our second week. Um, we have the emphasis on partnerships. We have the emphasis on choices to be made. We have the emphasis on also what gets you excited, you know, passionately involved. 
uh, because this is your eighth house, what brings about passionate transformation in your life? Like, what do you, where do you want to invest your energy? Uh, where do you feel excited? That's what's going to be the transformative energy in your life. And because Mars is retrograde here, you may be going back to some old passion project that you had to put on the back burner also. Um, in your heart, there may be a significant relationship that you're thinking about. Again, can be business, personal, friendship. Uh, or you're really yearning for that in your heart. You're yearning for greater connection in your world with somebody significant. But, um, also, Two of Cups can be about a deal going down. So that could also be tied in with our other two over here. Like in your heart, you're really hoping and wishing and expecting that an important uh, business deal is going to happen. Third week, this is our new moon in Sagittarius. Um, getting really clear on your desires, what you want this new opportunity to look like for you. Cause this can, we know can be a little sometimes fuzzy thinking on, you know, things that need clarity, need especially emotional clarity. So really get clear with yourself emotionally, what you want this to look like, because that's going to be the key to manifesting it. You got to feel really positive and excited and passionate with the lover's card here about it for it to come to fruition. And then we have this beautiful two of wands at the end of our month with some sort of new opportunity landing in your hand. Scorpio, very interesting month ahead for you. All right, Sagittarius, let's see what's going on for you in the November to remember and happy birthday to the November Sagittarians. Let's see what we have going on for you. We have the magician. Nice. The Hierophant. Mm, look at these major arcanas coming out here. The Nine of Wands. The Knight of Coins. And the Chariot. Wow, three major arcanas. This is Definitely going to be a November to remember. All right, so let's read it holistically and then we'll break it down week by week. Something's got to give. That's that's kind of what you're feeling. And with those nine of wands in your heart, you're like, I don't want it to be me anymore. Like, I'm tired of like this giving. Like, I need things to start coming back to me. I need to feel more in charge of my destiny. I feel like I've been batted around by the hand of fate. Like... Things need to break, break open, break free, help me get on a better path. That's coming for you. But you are, re you're just, your heart is tired. I mean, you have this nine of wands in the heart of the situation. You're, you're hanging in there, um, but it's getting to be all a bit much. And I think it's the idea that you want to um, take greater control of your life and of your destiny. And you may, like I said, may have felt like, that's been impossible lately, especially over the last five to seven months with these two energies here. But that's about to shift for you. Interesting, we have the full moon lunar eclipse showing up here with this Taurus energy. I will do a separate video on that. But that is your sixth house of work and well-being. Um, so whether we're talking to here about a work situation that needs to finally shift for you, if we're talking about a well-being, like I've, I've got to you know, address some imbalances in my life, energetic imbalances, uh, or both. That's definitely in the frame. Uh, there's something here you, the first two weeks of the month, you may be really learning about your own personal power. There may be an opportunity here for you to really step into your personal power and graduate with a PhD, as I like to say, in taking charge of your destiny in some way, like realizing what a powerful manifester you really, really are. There may be an opportunity for you to highlight your skills and talents and abilities, like really show people what you got, Sagittarius. Uh, maybe you haven't had a chance to do that or you've been holding back or you've just been too busy with other things or too worn out. But there could be a beautiful opportunity that presents itself where you can take center stage, so to speak, with this magician and really let people feel that beautiful magic that you have in whatever it is that you bring your energy to and really seeing how much 
your personal power can transform your own world. And that's what I'm saying, like graduating with your PhD program uh, and what you're really capable of doing. You're going to see very clearly you are capable of more and you're going to be stepping into more and a greater role in your world. And you're realizing that even though I feel, I feel a little like this in my heart, ultimately it's up to me and I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it well. And I'm going to be on this new path for myself. So we have the full moon lunar eclipse energy showing up here with the Hierophant. The Hierophant's a lot about karmic lessons wrapping up. It can be about commitments as well. So particularly because the full moon eclipse is happening in this house of work and well-being, there may be a commitment. Eclipses can bring things to an end. There may be a commitment that ends because you decide that's not where your personal power and personal direction need to go any longer. You're not invested in it anymore. You want something different for yourself. So that's possible. Also, it can just be, like I said, that you uh, get some beautiful news about how well you're doing in some area of your life, how well you've manifested something in your life because you've stepped into your power with it. You could have been also, this nine of wands could just be, you have been working very hard on a personal goal and it comes to fruition at this the full moon lunar eclipse and you realize, wow, I did that. And because you did that and you accomplished it, you can move on to something even better for yourself. So that's possible also with these energies. So this is, this is a major, the first two weeks is really about committing to yourself and your personal magic and letting yourself shine in the world, letting other people see your skills and talents and capabilities. There may be something here where you decide that you're gonna take a class or you're gonna offer a class or you're gonna study something new or, um, you know, because this is a lot about teaching and learning as well, but it but it also has more of a spiritual component. So that's why I'm saying it's like you're really going to feel like you've spiritually graduated <laughs> from one level to the next. So very, very nice. And you've been working hard on doing that. Third week, we have the Knight of Pentacles. So there may be some sort of beautiful financial offer that comes in for you. Uh, by the third week, something that comes in your hand and you're like, okay, do I want this or not? Uh, you're going to pause before you make that decision. You may make, be making that decision after the 27th. I think, I think the 28th is, is after Thanksgiving here. So it may not be until that la very last week in December, I mean, excuse me, December, November, where you, you say, okay, I'm going to choose this or I'm not going to choose it. Like which direction you're going to go in with this Knight of Pentacles offer. Something that has been slowly and steadily building, uh, like I said, has a positive shift for you where the this is slow, this is super fast. So whatever you have been building toward, you see the successful result of it. Because the third week is also your new moon in Sagittarius and it is very favorable energy around the 21st, 22nd. So you'll be like, wow, I did achieve this. This happened for me. And now where do I go? Do I, what do I do with this? What's the next you know, phase? So, and then we have this energy of rapid fire developments and movement. So, and I feel like this is gonna be good news, especially regarding finances that comes in for you showing that your hard work has paid off. And then we have the beautiful chariot to end your month. Like I said, the very, very last few days of uh, November where you're going to feel empowered. You're going to feel inspired. You're going to feel like, wow, I came, I saw, I conquered. I did this. I did it. I made it happen. Even though it was damn hard, <laughs> you know, I did it. And I also learned a lot about myself and about the world in the process. But whatever you're achieving here with this pentacle, it's solid, right? Like it's tangible. That's why I'm saying I really do feel it has something to do with your finances. Um, you know, so this is very good. Some of you, you're working very hard toward manifesting some sort of money for a new vehicle or vehicle repairs, something like that. Um, and I feel like that could come to a very successful conclusion for you as well toward the end of the month. Generally, it's not advised to buy a new car while Mars is retrograde in the transportation sign of Gemini. Um, however, you know, sometimes we can't always 
live every single decision that we make by the stars. You got to do what you got to do. So, you know, if that's the case for you, this does look favorable from these energies. Um, there may also be a travel opportunity for you that gets offered. You may not necessarily take the trip at the end of the month, but you might. But it also could just be like you get the funds to take that trip. This could be a business conference or a play, a, a type of conference or travel that's going to highlight your skills and abilities. Like if you're a performer or something, you get funding to be at a concert, you know, maybe next July with the chariot showing up. Um, so this is excellent, excellent energy. You're going to have a lot to look forward to by the end of the month. It's just about, I feel, keeping the faith and hanging in there. This is also a card about faith and also keeping the faith in yourself, your own talents and abilities and your ability to manifest positive changes in your life. Capricorn, let's see what's going on for you in the November to remember. What are the energies for Capricorns? We have the Judgment cover. I love this deck, but it really, it's very challenging to shuffle. <laughs> The hangman. Okay, this is interesting. Four cups is in your heart. Something better is coming for you. Something better is on its way. You're wishing for something better, but I feel it is coming. Yep, six of swords. And the two of cups. Oh yeah, baby. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. All right. So I like to read it holistically and then I break it down week by week. When I saw these first two, I felt like somebody was pressuring you. That's my elbow making that noise. Okay. Let's <laughs> just don't think it's something else going, going on. Um, when I first saw these two, I was like, I just like, was like, okay, somebody is pressuring you to make a decision. I don't feel it's the universe pressuring you. I, I feel like it's it's somebody else. It's probably some sort of karmic connection. It may have already ended and it's trying like the person may be trying to reconnect. This also could be business. It doesn't have to be necessarily romance or personal. The person's trying to reconnect. There's conversations with Pisces, your third house. So there's there's communications maybe from an ex an old contact an old flame uh somebody you haven't heard from in a long time but i what i am feeling is that it has pressure with it i feel like it has an expectation or a pressure and you're just like whoa back it up dude with this hangman here you're like wait a minute so you will probably entertain the idea briefly because 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 the hangman seeing something from a new perspective but i feel like in the end with the six of swords showing up is you'll realize this person has not changed this situation has not changed they're trying to re resurrect something that was dead a long time ago all right and in your heart this is why we have a four cups here I think you're hoping that is different, but I don't think it is going to be different. And in fact, there's going to be something way better coming on down the pike for you over here with this two of cups. Very nice. This two of cups over here, a better deal, a better connection, something more aligned for you energetically will come in. So what I would say, depending on how this fits your life, don't clutter up your life with this less than situation. There is a karmic wrap up here. It's very much, I feel, in your control, Capricorn, uh, because, because you're in the end here with the Six of Swords. Like, you're the one steering the ship, and you're getting out of town, and you're getting out of Dodge, and you're like, whoa, let me, let me out of this. Uh, so, and, yeah. Whatever comes back around and is offered to you, this could, and if it's in a business sense, like, this could even be something that is an old deal, an old contact, like maybe a decision got tabled or for some reason it was kind of like held in suspended animation. Um, it's not still not right. And I think you know this also intuitively. 
So you don't like you're a Capricorn. All right. You don't have to ever act from desperation. You know what I'm saying? All right. So like, no. All right. But be real with yourself. Like I said, you're wishing that whatever comes to the universe and you're hoping that this thing that's coming from the universe is going to be different. It's not, I feel. And you're going to wake up to that fact. And the better you're going to wake up to the better, the fact that the better thing is on its way with the cups here, you're going to sense that intuitively trust your intuition on this Capricorn. Okay. Um, this person, this situation is likely to come out of the woodwork probably right around that full moon lunar eclipse, which is happening in Taurus, which is your fifth house of love, romance, creativity, being an entrepreneur, taking risks, all that type of thing. So, Again, full moon lunar eclipses often bring endings, but they can also just bring, because this lunar eclipse is also conjunct Uranus. I will do a separate video on the lunar eclipse, but the planet of surprises. So it can be very surprising that this person pops out of the woodwork. Again, I would not make any decisions about this. There is the element here, I feel like if you go back to this in some way, especially if there's pressurizing, you're, they're pressuring you, you're going to end up in a situation where you're going to be sacrificed your wants your needs are going to be sacrificed and you're going to get the short end of the stick is what i am feeling and that's not where you want to be with this energy so important karmic decision coming up for you with this energy so this person may be connecting around the second of november that's possible um we have the 12th here so between the second and the 12th is possible the full moon's on the eighth so work with the timings here but you have been disappointed in the past by this person or this connection situation, whatever it is. And you're not too keen on getting your hopes up. But because this is karmic, there is something here where, yeah, there may be a little bit of hope there. But you'll wake up to the fact pretty darn fast that this is this is not the direction to go in. Uh, which is why we have in the third week, the Six of Swords. Your mind will be fully made up and you'll realize that uh, you saved yourself from a very serious situation that could have been really not very good for you. So don't be afraid. You know, sometimes not just Capricorn, but anybody, we hold on to things because we think something better is not going to come in. Don't be worried or afraid about that because something better is coming. Um, and this is going to bring leaving behind this karmic situation and this pressure is going to bring you a lot of peace of mind as well. You're going to have, I feel like this third week, excuse me, this third week of November, you're going to be breathing this big sigh of relief. You're going to be and released. You're going to be like, oh, thank God, right? Like that that is done and over. Um, and then we end the month with the beautiful two of cups. So there could be a very important meeting the last week of November, uh, whether business or personal. This is, I love a two of cups. This is very much energy that is aligned. It feels good. Um, but th that's just the start of something. Remember Mars is retrograde until January 12th. You don't want to start any associations or projects just yet. Sure. You can take meetings and meet, greet, talk to people. Great. Don't make any commitments yet, but this is very, very positive for, as I said, something better coming in for you, which will be continued to be continued. This is, uh, end of February energy when we're in Pisces season. So what gets started now, whoever you connect with at the end of uh, November, by the end of February could be a very important person in your world, whether business or personal. So, and there could be, you know, some very good deal going down, connection to do, you know, business, personal, whatever. So this is really, really good. Don't get swept back up into this. Capricorn. All right, Aquarius, let's see what's going on for you in your November to remember. Aquarius. The Four of Cups. The Three of Swords. The Eight of Cups. The Ace of Wands.
and the four of coins. Wow. Interesting. Okay. So I'm going to look at this holistically and then break it out week by week. I will be doing a separate video on the full moon lunar eclipse. Which is happening in your fourth house of the foundation of your life. Home, family, roots, what nourishes you and what feeds you. We have the fourth house showing up over here, Taurus, with your four of coins. I do feel like there may be a disappointment with some sort of fourth house issue. What I mostly felt about here is that there may be some sort of deal that falls through, offer that falls through. Like this could be for buying your house, selling your house, uh, managing money, something to do with uh, foundational security in some way. Um, this could also be with some sort of, um, you know, family member you thought was going to move in, move out, something like that. Um, I just am basically feeling, you know, what nourishes you and what feeds you. So like, what gives you sustenance? What makes you feel good? What makes you feel valued? What makes you, you know, feel loved? All that type of thing. So that's another way to look at the fourth house energy. So there's no getting around the fact that this is a little dicey energy that's coming up here. But then it gets better. I want you to see this. This ace of wands and this four of coins. I feel like... <sighs> There is something that is likely to be disappointing, but it's because it's pointing you in a different direction with this Ace of Wands. You're like, you're going to have the go ahead and the green light in a new direction in this fourth house matter. But first, this thing you thought you wanted or was supposed to happen or whatever is probably, you know, going to be disappointing with the Three of Swords showing up here, which is why we have the Eight of Cups in your heart. Notice your back is turned to this situation. So, Let's break this out. I mean, this could even be, you know, a romantic situation as well, if if that's what's going on in your life. So it could be a relationship that has been um, important to the foundation of your life. Could be a friendship, does not have to be romantic. But there could be something with that person where they betray you in some way. They betray the friendship in some way with the Three of Swords showing up here. Or there is a blockage. There is something here that blocks you from uh, really continuing to nurture and be in this relationship. So for, I like to give concrete examples. This can be something like they're dating, they start to date somebody that is very controlling and that person they're dating doesn't want your friend to connect with you anymore. And maybe they feel like they can't talk to you anymore. It could be something like that. And you, you feel heartbroken, like they can't discuss, be with me, like, is this worth it anymore? There could be something that if business and pleasure has been mixed, there could be something where that's the block that comes in between the two of you, like some sort of money issue, uh, you know, or betrayal. They said they were going to pay you for this and then they didn't or they forgot or this happened, that happened, whatever. So it could be something like that. But you're going to land on your feet and you're going to you know, kind of like consolidate your losses, so to speak. There will be something positive that grows out of whatever you walk away from with this Ace of Wands and this Four of Coins. All right. You will be holding on and you will, whatever is authentic will remain with this, with this energy. There's something that is not aligned correctly with the Three of Swords showing up here with this connection situation which is why it's going to leave. Why you're going to leave it. You're going to choose to leave it behind. You're eight of, you've got the eight of cups in your heart. All right. So, but it's going to end okay. The four of cups coming in, this person could make an offer to you or they had an offer made to them. Like I said, if it's somebody who starts dating somebody else and now they can't like talk to you anymore. Um, or they suggest something to you and it looks promising. You're like, okay, yeah, maybe this would be, be a good thing. And again, it's likely something because of the four here, to affect the foundation of your life. So you could get excited about it. You're like, wow, this could really change my life. Like this could be great if this happens. Um, so some sort of proposal comes in, but then with that full moon lunar eclipse, you're gonna see very clearly that something's not right with it. And it's a disappointment. It hurts. 
All right, so this is just, you know, we all live under the same skies. There's been a lot of this type of energy going on. And the fact that Saturn is in your sign right now, it's getting ready to leave next March. <laughs> you know, you, you are facing, I mean, when Saturn transits our own sign, we our sun sign, we do face often some unpleasant truths about people's situations and our commitments. So you may be facing some sort of unpleasant truth with somebody close to you. It was fourth house or about the foundation of your life. Oh, here she comes. <laughs> so Ariel's trying to trying to lend emotional support to the Aquarians. She has not showed up for any other sign. And last time in one of my videos, she didn't come for the Aquarians and she was on her fuzzy blanket. Now she showed up for you. All right. So Ariel's saying all's well that ends well. It'll be OK. All right. So just be aware of that energy, though. All right. And apply the energies to your personal situation. Then the third week with that Sagittarian new moon that's popping on in and that's very favorable energy aligned with yours. There is an offer from the universe. There is something new that I feel will come in a new possibility that will come in very quickly to take its place. That will be better. You will see you had a lucky escape. So something comes in here, but it's not aligned correctly. But this is aligned correctly. It's an ace of wands. Wands for me or aces for me are about the self. Wands is about our physical energy, how we use our energy, about new beginnings, fresh starts. So you will have a fresh start in this area. And with the four coins, by the end of the month, you will see that this fresh start has the beginnings of solid potential more than that other thing could ever have had. And you have the potential here to make make some good money to build something foundationally secure in your life could also be some sort of new relationship that comes in that will be much more stable and grounded for you so a relationship you could count on that type of thing so it will be okay but do not turn a blind eye to whatever right ariel whatever this might be over here because that's not going to serve you. And, and like I said, it may sting, it may hurt, but it's also the universe is trying to get that out of there so it can bring this new possibility in for you. All right, Pisces, let's see what's going on for you in this November to remember. Pisces, 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 Pisces. Let's find out. Oh, we have your energy. The Queen of Cups. I was calling you in. I was saying, Pisces, Pisces, where are you, Pisces? The two of coins. The moon in your heart. What you confused about, Pisces? Are you a little confused? Let's see. The hermit. Are you confused about a relationship? And the seven of coins. Are you confused about should you stay? Should you go? Should you be in a partnership? Should you not be in a partnership? All right. So I'd like to read this holistically and then dive in a little deeper going week to week. So interesting that your personal energy came out first. So this this very much is a month that you want to have under your control. <laughs> so a month to really assert your personal agendas. But with the moon in the heart of the situation, it is likely that there is some confusion, some doubt, some I don't know what to do exactly, which is also because we, we have the two of pentacles here. So this can be I'm weighing my options and this also with one foot off the ground, a little unbalanced. I don't know what to choose. This can be a card of a little bit of emotional imbalances as well. Seven of coins. I'm kind of looking at my situation, but I'm not really sure what to do. What I would say from this energy is you don't have to make any big decisions this month. I feel like you're going to get some information that's going to show you options, but you do not have to decide on those options this month. That is what I am feeling. Um, in fact, you may be taking the next seven weeks ish 
Actually, I feel like this is our last energy. So seven weeks from like Sagittarius season. So by the time we get to the, what I'm trying to say is by the time we get to the end of the Mars retrograde, by the time we get to the very tail end of Capricorn season, so after January 12th, then you're likely to be making a decision on this. Right now, this month, you're weighing options, you're taking time out for yourself to tune in with the hermit here in terms of what is the right course of action for me. Now, we have the Virgo energy showing up. That is your seventh house of partnerships. We have the seventh house Virgo represented here by the seven of coins. So, and we have the second house represented here, right? The two, the two options. Which one makes me feel better? Which one enhances my self-esteem versus which one is draining of my confidence? So there may be some situations going on like that as well. You could be torn between two romantic possibilities. Again, apply it to your life. You could be torn between two business projects, two business partners, two uh, business projects you want to invest your energy, your creative energy in. There just may be a lot of confusion about the direction to head in with these opportunities, these possibilities for yourself. There may be a conversation at that full moon lunar eclipse that's happening in your third house where that opportunity is presented to you or one is taken away. That's possible too. You may think that you have had two options, but eclipses, especially full moon lunar eclipses, could bring one out of your life. So there could also be an option that gets eliminated by the universe at that time. That's possible with this full moon also in the heart of the situation. You may just have to accept that that option is no longer on the table for you. That's also a possibility at that full moon lunar eclipse. Um, which is why we have this at the end where you're kind of reevaluating. Well, if I only have one opportunity left, maybe I'm going to wait to see what else may come in. And also with Mars being retrograde in Gemini, which is your fourth house of home family roots, what nourishes you and what feeds you and the foundation of your life, you may indeed feel like you don't have, you know, a really viable option upon which to build a solid future. Not yet. That is coming though. I think the key here with these energies this month is to really focus in on your own cup, what you really want and what's going to nurture you and sustain you. Um, and also spiritually looking at this from this situation from a spiritual perspective, um, not necessarily a practical one or one that's about tangible gains first. Right. So it may not be so much about what you can financially profit from in a situation, but more like what's going to feed your spirit first and foremost. So that may be going on as well. Um, there could be a relationship that looks good on paper, but doesn't necessarily feed your soul. So you're looking at you're trying to look at it from a practical perspective. Does it work for you? Does it not work for you? The seven of coins can also be, well, it's only grown thus far. You know, it's only made it to this level. And maybe you're going to evaluate and realize that one of these opportunities is only going to go so far for you. It's not going to be the whole enchilada. It's not going to be everything that you want from it. But you're going to have to take time out and figure that out. So I feel like it would be. It would be good for you, especially that third week of November, to take some time, and the fourth week, actually the second half, take some time out for yourself to have that introspection, to really figure out, well, what is going to be the, the right option for me? I often call this getting stuck in an infinity loop. Like, you just go back and forth, round and round, with the same situation, the same energy. I, I think there's something here also. And also we get that with the moon. That's like cycles, right? The, see, the cycle keeps repeating itself. There's a spiritual solution to solving this issue of this cycle repeating yourself. And only you can find that answer within you with the Queen of Cups here to figure that out and break the cycle and come up with something that's going to be much better for you. So this is, this is a real month to kind of see where, where you are in charge, Queen of Cups. You are in charge of, 
of your emotional destiny, your spiritual destiny, and how that plays out in what you manifest in outward reality. So I know you know this, you're going to see this very clearly, uh, but you don't have to make, like, I just want to really emphasize this. You do not have to make big decisions this month. This, this energy is really showcasing to me digging and finding out the information and just sitting with it a little bit until you gain that clarity that you need to move forward. There is no rush with this particular situation and these energies this month, Pisces. Okay. So especially, especially with Mars retrograde. Okay. There's no rush and go watch that video if you haven't already. So thank you so much for joining me for your November to remember tarot energies. I love you guys. I hope you have a great month. Leave me a comment. Let me know what's going on for you with these energies. I'll be back with more videos too soon. Stay tuned for my full moon, lunar eclipse and Taurus video coming up very shortly. And also check out the new moon and Scorpio video and the Mars retrograde video. Remember, it's all about using the energies and not letting them use you. I'll see you again soon. Stella Wild and Miss Ariel signing out.